Hi guys, it's Mrs. Augustine. I wanted to talk a little bit today about our feeling of control. So right now, I think it's important for us to have the conversation about what it feels like to feel out of control. Because honestly, we're in a very unique situation in our country and actually throughout the world where there's a lot of things out of our control. And I think it's very natural for kids, adults, teachers, parents, grandparents, caregivers, for all of us to want to feel like our actions will result in a certain outcome. However, in situations like this, we are forced to learn that sometimes that's not always the case, and that is unsettling and can be a little scary. So what I want to do is share an activity with you today that I saw, and I will post it on my Google Classroom. Um, what it is called is what's in my control, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this um, worksheet on my Google Classroom. Now, for those of you who don't have printers or ran out of ink or don't want to waste your paper, I totally understand. Um, you don't need this, okay? You don't have to print this out off of my Google Classroom, um, but I will attach it for those of you who do want to use it. So as you can see, what we're going to do is inside the nest, you're going to write the things that you can control. So this is what it says up here. I can control, right? So these are things that we're going to write about what we know, even in this situation, that we as people can control, okay? So that's what's going to go in the middle here. Then on the outside, outside the nest, write things that you cannot control, okay? So those of you who have access to a printer or want to print this out, you can use this actual form. If not, I pulled out just a plain piece of paper and I made my own circle and in the inside, I would like you to write, I can control, okay? Just like the other one. And on the outside, we're going to write things that are not in our control, unfortunately, right now, okay? So I think this is a great um, conversation to have. Um, parents for you to have with your kids. I know last night my husband and I sat down and talked to our kids about the whole situation and, and they're, you know, eight and six. So they're a little on the younger side, but we did take an opportunity to talk to them about how being uncomfortable and feeling unsure is scary, but that there are things that we can control still. So inadvertently, we ended up doing this activity without actually pulling this activity out. Um, but I think it's a good conversation starter. And I think it's good for kids to have ownership over, you know, some of their control in this situation. So long story short, here is some examples of things that I came up with. So um, what I would like to share is that for me, and this is all personal. So depending on the age of the kid, depending on the um, maturity of the, of the child, depending on the, you know, awareness of the situation, these can look very different and that is perfectly fine. Okay. So these are my own personal feelings. So for me, I felt like I can control. These are things I know today that I can control where I go. As much as I would love to be out and about and socializing with people, I know that my job right now is to stay home and take care of my family's well-being and the well-being of others by not going out unnecessarily to stores just because I'm bored, okay? So that's something I know I can control. I can control how I feel. Now, this changes day to day, minute to minute, um, but I am still in control of how I react to certain situations. Staying positive. Okay, this, this is the tough one, right? So we can control that. I think naturally I've always been the kind of person to find the good in as many situations as I can. So for me right now, I am working on trying to take this as, okay, I'm stuck in the house and maybe I'm not really stuck. Maybe I'm safe in my house. And Maybe I should be fortunate that I am able to stay home. Um, so there's a lot of ways to go about keeping positive, right? It could be the sun's finally out today. Thank goodness. Um, also keeping busy. I think this is important for adults, kids, 
elders, everybody. We got to keep busy because downtime is when you start thinking too much, when you start really kind of getting in a funk. Um, keeping busy can be doing physical activity, jumping checks, uh, jumping rope, going for a run, going for a family walk, going out back, just sitting outside in the fresh air, something that I've been trying to do my best. So that's what kind of keeps me grounded. This is where I'm trying to focus most of my energy and attention every day is trying to work on the things that I myself can control. So then we come to these little red ones that I did in a different color, just visually for myself, but again, use whatever colors you want. All right. So obviously coronavirus is definitely out of all of our control. Um, there's really not much else we can say about that. It is literally not in our control. It doesn't, you know, there's no control over who this impacts. Okay. So we could have the majority of the household staying home and doing, you know, their social distancing, but there are some families, myself included, who there's somebody in the family that is still out working in the public. So I have to, you know, really hope that the other people in society are taking this seriously and that they're being safe and that they're not going to then unknowingly even pass germs on, which then could get spread to my family. So I try not to think about that too much because that could really just kind of downward spiral. Um, how long this will last? Whew, hopefully not that long, but there's nothing else we can do about it. We just got to keep plugging through. We'll get through it together and it will come to an end. It's just, we don't know how long yet, but every week that we get through is one week closer to getting back to, to normal life. And something else we can't control, how others react. We know that there are always going to be people that tend to find the negative to everything. So I encourage you to try to keep your distance from people who may have a negative attitude about this because it's only going to make it harder. Um, and I think we need to try our best to just be positive and support one another because there's going to be days that even the strongest, most positive person is going to be feeling down. So we just need to, to help each other out and get through this as a, as a community and as fellow educators and parents and caregivers and guardians, it's, you know, the whole, it takes a village. It's very true. And I think for once, we really need to focus on the village, including the older population and parents and caregivers, because we're just as impacted by this, if not more than the kids. So I just wanted to share this little activity with you. It's just something very simple. I think 